Hey everyone, this is Keith Scott from out in Sydney, Australia. I'm one of the voices of Bullwinkle J. Moose. It's time to watch Relentless and Unstoppable. And so give it up for your main hosts, Douglas Kenny and Andy McPhee. Hey everybody, this is Doug Kenny and welcome to Relentless and Unstoppable. We have another amazing guest coming on the channel today, so please hit like and subscribe. And after this episode, please stay tuned to the RNU channel for more amazing guests. Let's get this on! Hey everybody, how you doing? Just a, a quick uh, little share of why I started Relentless and Unstoppable. It was for one very simple reason, because of Doug Kenny. Nothing to do with me at all, zero. I was just coaching Doug and he took on the coaching and mentoring and he made all the changes. He took all the suggestions from his his parents as well as my, my coaching, but it was all about Doug, his breakthrough and his weight loss, uh, he, his willingness to accept that uh, he is dealing with high functioning autism and, and other issues, but he's never quit, he's never given up. So we did one interview with him to share his story and then we decided to start interviewing other people. And Doug has now taken over the whole channel and he does all the interviews. He runs everything. He's just an amazing young man. So RNU was born from simply what an amazing young man Doug is and his story needed to be shared. Hey everybody, this is Doug Kenny from Relentless and Unstoppable. I want to thank my fourth grade instructor, Trisha Wynn, for introducing me to the book, Mighty Jackie, the Strikeout Queen. And today we have the author of that book, Marissa, with us. Hey, how you doing? Great. I'm excited to be here talking about Jackie Mitchell. Yeah. So, yeah, what, what was your upbringing like? <laughs> well, it didn't involve baseball, that's for sure. I mean, I was a very bad athlete. Um, but I was always fascinated by the by history and the stories that aren't in standard history. It's the stories outside of history, the ones that are kind of kept in the secret corners that I'm fascinated by. And those are the stories I want to find to tell. Yeah, for sure. How did you find the story of Jackie Mitchell striking out Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig? Well, it wasn't easy because this actually came from um, my editor. I've been working on stories about particularly um, women who have been forgotten or unwritten in most of history. And she wanted me to do something about baseball. And I thought, like, baseball? I don't know anything about baseball. How am I going to find something about baseball that that is something that intrigues me enough that I can spend the time doing research on it? And I thought, well, maybe... I'd heard of the League of Their Own during World War II when women played baseball, but I thought maybe there's a history of women in baseball earlier than that. And I just started digging and looking and looking and looking, and I found Jackie Mitchell. There's not a whole lot written about her. It's mostly newspaper articles, and I do research the old-fashioned way. I'm lucky to live in, in Berkeley, California, where I have a wonderful university where you can actually go and use microfiche to look through newspapers the old-fashioned way and I just um, she caught my eye and then I thought I've got to know about her I really want to know about her how did she get where she got and why don't we know more about her yeah for sure that was probably a big upset in baseball you know going off against David and Goliath you know well, exactly. And reading the newspaper articles, they, they covered, I mean, this was basically, I think the, the man who scouted her and hired her was using her as a publicity stunt. I don't think he took her seriously, even though she was a really good pitcher. And her father had encouraged her. He, he saw her skill from the time she was really young. And he really encouraged her and worked with her. And um, so there were a lot of newspaper articles in advance of the game because it was set up like a big publicity stunt. And there were, in fact, after the game happens, she does end up striking out Babe Ruth and then Lou Gehrig. And, um, and she keeps on doing it until they, they pull her from the mound because it's just too embarrassing to the, the male players. And there were stories afterwards suggesting that, oh, this was a stunt that Babe Ruth, oh, he pretended 
to miss and he really would have hit the ball. But that, I think, is absolutely clearly not what happened because if you read the stories before and after from Babe Ruth's point of view, he is very angry and he says after she's that he'll never, ever play with a woman again. So if it had been on purpose, he would have played along, but he didn't. He was really upset that she shut him up. That was not what was supposed to happen in his mind. Yeah, I do remember reading that, that he yelled at the umpire. You know, that too. Yes. He was furious. And, and this is, again, this, I can only get this stuff through newspapers because there's not a lot written about her, and unfortunately she didn't have family members, I, which this is the next thing I do is try to track down family members of people who knew her or knew her as a grandmother or an older generation because she's she wouldn't she's not alive now or wasn't when I started doing this book um, but I couldn't find anybody she just um, didn't she did get married but she never had children so there weren't other family members to talk to um, which left me really relying on newspapers um, but that is still a great source because it tells you what people were thinking at the time so it's contemporary attitudes towards her yeah did Lou Gehrig feel the same way? Well, that's interesting because he doesn't um, talk about it. He, I think he was more gracious and not as, um, his ego wasn't as bound up by it. And also I think he could, he could say, well, she struck out Babe Ruth. What do you expect from me? I'm, I, I can't be better than the Babe, although he was obviously a very good player in his own right. So I, I, I didn't see any other Yankees bad-mouthing her, just Babe Ruth. And then, of course, the baseball commissioner says, okay, we can't have this happening. It's it's too destructive to the, obviously, to the male players, but he says it's too, uh, it's too difficult for women to do this. This is too tough a sport, and he kicks women out of baseball, saying it's too hard on them. And when I read this book to elementary school kids, and I say, I ask the kids, so do you think it was really too hard on the women? Um, and they say, no, no, it wasn't. I say, so who was it too hard on? And the boys are just kind of shaking their heads. Who was it too hard on? The girls are all saying, the boys, the boys, it was too hard on the boys. The girls get it. The boys are still shaking their heads thinking, like, who was it too hard on? It was too hard on the men, obviously, yes. And uh, too hard on the baseball commissioner didn't want it. I think he thought it would make baseball somehow unpatriotic if women got involved. It would not be as manly a sport, and he couldn't have that happen. Yeah, and not only that, but that commissioner, Kenesaw Landis was his name, by the way, he he was one of those people that ruled baseball with an iron fist. And even if Jackie Mitchell spoke out against it or stood up for herself, he would have automatically banned her for life the way that he did the Black Sox, you know? He was just a very controlling man. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And if anybody, not just Jackie or the players, but if anybody who had a job in baseball spoke out against him, he would have banned them for life, you know? So it was almost like a dictatorship back then. So, there was re so there's really no hope for her. And what, what's sad is that she, she wanted to still play. So she ended up playing, I mean, I end up on a high note because I think she deserves that with her striking out Babe Ruth. But her, her later career was she was doing... Uh, that exhibition baseball for the teams that were considered a joke. She was she was playing with the Hebrew League, and no one took that seriously. She was playing with they, where she was um, doing baseball while riding a donkey. I mean, it was that kind of stuff. Stu you, you, so your your podcast is basically about people who just keep on going, who who don't uh, don't allow themselves to be dissuaded. Pretty much, and people that achieve big things as well, like Jackie in this case. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and this is this people attract me to. There's a lot of the people that I write about, and I do have another baseball book. I don't know if you know it, Barbed Wire Baseball, which is about um, the man who um, got the people in the Japanese American internment camps to play baseball. Oh, cool! Because it was the only it was the only time they got out of the camps was they could play baseball against local teams, or they would get on buses and play against other Japanese American teams. And I knew, I you know, being in California, I knew about the interment camp. I knew they played baseball. I just, and I was asked, and I would ask myself the question: Who started that? Somebody had to start it. And um, that had me track down Kenichi Zanamura, who was dead, but his one of his sons, he was interned with two teenage sons. One of them was still alive, and I could talk to him. And it was just wonderful to talk to someone who was there, who saw exactly what happened, and knew what his father's motivations were. To get that kind of source is a rare treasure 
when you're writing these kind of books. Yeah, for sure. Tell us more about what exactly transpired with the Jackie Mitchell story leading up to the strikeout of Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig. Gee, that's all we have for Relentless and Unstoppable. So tune into the next episode to hear more amazing stories from amazing guests. This is Keith Scott from Sydney, Australia saying so long and be... I'm smarter than the average bear. Gee.